Okay, I want to give you guys a tutorial on how to do an oil cooler bypass kit on a 6.0 Power Stroke. Um, this is a do-it-yourself kit. It works and it's pretty effective. Um, and it's a, probably a cheap way for you guys to go if you don't want to use a water to oil cooler. Um, this is to use an air to oil cooler along with a high flow uh, bypass filter kit. So. Today we have two oil filter uh, oil cooler housings. They're exactly the same. The only difference is one's modified to not have an oil cooler, and this one is a regular oil cooler housing. So what I have done is I've welded up this hole, this hole, this one, and this one has been capped completely. Another thing you need to weld up is this hole right here in the front. Okay, and then these two holes here need to be welded as well but weld those from the bottom okay so those are all plugged up if you want you can use the housing off of a van the top shell you get one of these from an e350 um, or 250 or any of the e-series vans with a six liter this is uh, the, here's the difference on the e350s they don't use um, there's a valve right here that bolts into place um, they don't have that in here another thing is this is welded shut this is the drain back valve and there's nothing there so it's it's capped off so if you're gonna use your factory truck style um, top shell um, just delete what goes here and delete uh, basically cap this hole off right here if you want to make things very simple get the E350 van style fuel pressure regulator kit. Um, this is the where the oil filter would bolt to right here, the oil filter housing. This is the van style. So you have your inlet and outlet of your oil that comes. Here's how it's going to flow. So your oil will get pumped up from the low pressure pump and it goes through here. It comes up. through the housing okay so it's gonna come directly up through this hole and it will you won't have a filter here okay because this is gonna be bolted to that okay so your oil comes straight up comes out of the hole okay in the back if you want you can weld a dash 10 an fitting onto this um, and then when the oil returns it will come in the other hole and basically disperse through these two holes. These two holes is basically going to come right down through here, straight down and out into the high pressure side of the um, where the oil cooler usually goes. So it's going to feed the low pre uh, the high pressure oil pump. So this side will feed the jets and this side will feed the low pressure oil pump. So it's going to take a little bit more oil because you're not running a cooler anymore. So it's going to this is all going to be filled up with oil. Um, I'd still recommend using the screen in the bottom so the screen will stay so don't worry about that so I'm gonna show you a little, a little graph, uh, graph here on how this is set up um, if you're using the truck style top shell what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna weld this up you're gonna need to drill a hole right here and weld a dash 10 an fitting to this then what you're gonna need to do is on your filter housing you're going to delete this, delete the filter, and you're going to get the aluminum billet cap for the top, and you're going to drill a hole in the top of that and put another dash 10 AN fitting onto the top of that cap. So drill it out, weld it on there, and now you have your outlet and your inlet for your oil. Now, on here you have the oil coming out, which is right here. The oil comes out. From here okay goes down to the filter and then you have an EA filter which is a basic 25,000 mile uh, regular oil filter and then you have your bypass filter which is your 2 micron or whatever filter after that then the oil leaves the filters goes to the front of the truck and then this is a thermostat this is a mechanical thermostat that is like 180 degrees this thermostat will open up 
and allow the oil to go into the cooler. This is an air cooler. So it'll heat exchange and then come back. If this is, doesn't reach 180 degrees, the oil basically just comes through here, goes straight up, and then goes up into the top of the oil uh, filter housing. On here, you'll see these little holes. These are supposed to be test ports, but they didn't use them as a test port. Um, there's actually a uh, fitting for this uh, on the uh, low pressure sending unit. You can take that off and get an adapter fitting to hook up for low, testing your low pressure oil system um, instead of having to go to here. But since this hole is available and there's a, a hole in here okay, that feeds oil through, you actually get a good sending unit. Um, you can use a temperature switch and that's what I've done on this truck. So I put a temp switch in here. They sell an adapter uh, through JEGS or uh, uh, Summit and this is a temperature switch. Okay, that's what I have right here. So the temperature switch will come on at 190 degrees and it shuts off at 175. What that switch is gonna control is a relay that you would hook up. And the relay, you can get a 10 inch fan to put behind the heat exchange. So when this oil temperature gets to 190 degrees, it kicks the fan on and now your fan's cooling down your oil that's basically going through here and getting cooled off so it's that's how it's going to regulate your oil cooling um, so there's that setup so now we're going to go onto the truck and I'll show you how it's set up on the truck okay so we're in the engine compartment and you can see this hose right here it comes down and goes to that dash 10 fitting right there there's a 45 degree fitting uh, dash 10 fitting on that it's an and fitting and then here's the oil filter housing that has the dash 10 welded up on the top. So this is the return line and that is the outlet line. So the oil gets pumped up and pumps directly out of here. Um, it's up to you if you want. You can put a, um, a check valve in this line. This truck doesn't have one but it builds up oil pressure quickly so I'm not really worried about it. So the oil line goes down. This is a 5 8 hose. Um, it's a high pressure uh, hydraulic hose. So it's pretty heavy duty. And I'm going to show you as it goes down the frame on the uh, driver's side here. I'll show you where it goes to. Okay, so the oil comes in. In this line here. This is the regular EAO 98 filter. It's a basic oil filter <clears throat> and then this is the bypass filter it's a little a lot bigger you can see the difference in the size there so this is the two micron bypass and then another thing I added to this one is a temperature sending unit so you can actually watch the temperature or the uh, it's a pressure sending unit sorry and the pressure will build up and I can see it on the a pillar um, how it builds pretty fast so you can Watch that and see if your what your oil pressure looks like all the time. Um, so it comes out of here, 90s out, and then this hose goes back to the front of the truck. So this is actually mounted right behind the transmission here, if you can see. It doesn't stick down too much. Um, and since the truck is lifted, I'm not worried about hitting anything with that filter. All right, so now the hose comes up from the bottom. Uh, let's see here. The hose comes up from the bottom of the truck and then this is the thermostat I was talking about so this is the thermostat that is mechanically controlled by heat it's a thermal thermostat so the oil comes up goes through there and then goes across here into the heat exchange so you can see the the heat exchanger there and then on the back side there's a fan so the fan is hooked up to a relay oil comes back out and then the hose comes up and through here, comes up and over, and goes back into the top of the filter housing. So um, there's no filter in the top of that housing, but this is how it's set up on this truck. So anyways, there's your review on how I did a bypass filter uh, system uh, about five years ago on that truck. And uh, it's still working, and truck's got 
200,000 miles on it now. Um, it was put on back when it had like 130,000 on it. So um, I still run uh, Rotella T6 in that truck. Um, I'm not using any Amsoil uh, uh, oil at this time. Um, I changed the uh, EAO 98 filter um, every 5,000 to 6,000 miles. Um, the bypass filter, I change that probably once a year. Um, the oil is very clean. Um, I don't have any problems with low pressure uh, on the starting or anything. It starts right up every time. Um, so, uh, but yeah, if you uh, have any questions um, and you want to leave a comment, go for it. Um, again, if I had to do it all over again, I would have used the, uh, the van style uh, housing on the top to make it easier to run the the lines out of it um, just didn't have access to one at the time and it was kind of something uh, for testing I wanted to try out um, but it works good and if you uh, want to do a hundred percent filtration of your oil and make it clean all the time this is what I would recommend doing it's the best results uh, you're gonna find because uh, you know that every oil all the oil that gets pumped up from the oil pump is going directly into those filters um, firsthand before it goes into the uh, into the engine so uh, you're gonna get better filtration and you're gonna get you know uh, better results in your in the lifespan of your oil um, but depending on the oil you're running you're still gonna have breakdown and stuff like that but uh, like I said with the, the oil changes I do every five to six thousand miles um, I have no injection problem uh, no injector stiction problem I'm even running oversized injectors in that truck um, so uh, I don't get any stiction problem um, it's in the mornings here it's about 20 degrees outside and the truck fires right up every time without even plugging it into the uh, to the house um, I don't even have a cord on that engine to uh, to do a, a plug uh, to plug it into the house so that um, I just never put the cord back on when I put that motor in there but um, I don't have a problem with cold starts and um, so anyways if you have any uh, questions Please feel free to comment and like and subscribe. Thank you.